Christian McCaffrey's meteoric rise from a solid Panthers running back to the best rushing weapon in the NFL is not easy to duplicate. But the Philadelphia Eagles have a new plan in place that will not only try to match McCaffrey's success in San Francisco, but improve on its lone weakness in the hopes of turning Saquon Barkley into an NFL juggernaut in 2024. Let me explain how. I'm Thomas Mott. This is The Thomas Mott Show. <laughs> Saquon Barkley's signing was probably the most controversial move Howie Rosen made the entire offseason. Like, nearly every other move was met with vast support from even the most hardened Roseman critics in Philadelphia. For instance, C.J. Gunner Johnson coming back to shirt the safety spot was a great move. We all loved it. Bryce Huff for almost $10 million less than Hassan Reddick? Well, that move now seems like a steal, and of course hindsight, after Hassan Reddick's recent no-show antics with the New York Jets. Even smaller moves like Kenny Pickett or Zach Bond, and of course the draft class have had overwhelming support from Eagle fans. But the Saquon signing was a lot different. $13 million for a running back? Well, Howie Roseman's critics were very quick to point out the Eagles don't do that. They like normal running backs at a cheap price and then other weapons in the trend and on the outside. I mean, you gotta go back to LaShawn McCoy in 2014 to find the last real high-priced star running back in Midnight Green. Since then, it's been basically Miles Sanders on a rookie contract, and of course DeAndre Swift, who Philly spent pennies on last year and then did not use enough. So of course, naturally, history should tell you that the Eagles don't use the running back spot enough to warrant the $13 million price tag. Plus, what if Saquon is just an average back this year? Which is kind of the argument that John McMullen told me a couple of weeks ago during my hit on Jacob Media. And I, there's one guy I focus on. Yeah. <laughs> People think I dislike him. I like him a lot. He's a, he's a great guy. He's a great leader. He's a great person to have in the organization. But I have not seen the evidence that Saquon Barkley is who people think he is. And that was coming out of Penn State as the number two overall pick. He had one big season as a rookie with the Giants. Yeah. Then he had the torn ACL, and it's been, okay, he's a good player, not a great player. The Eagles have spun him. They've used the word special. Do you think he is a special player? But I think all the media members and Saquon Barkley critics are just missing one key point. They're not talking about this. Howie Roseman is in full overcorrection mode this offseason, which is a little bit intricate. Let me explain. First, though, I announced a new giveaway yesterday, a Jalen Hurts Nike t-shirt. You see that right there on your screen. To enter, go to yesterday's show. It'll be in the pinned comment section. Drop a comment, comment Hurts, and also be subscribed. That winner will be picked next week. Back to overcorrection, though. It's something the Eagles have rarely done throughout their history. Like, usually, NFL teams like to kind of stick to their status quo, kind of draft what you know, make a few for agent splashes here and there, plug some holes, but overall, keep things the same. Recently, though, Howie has worked a little bit differently. His kind of new philosophy has been to overcorrect for mistakes of the past. Take the wide receiver spot, for instance. Howie missed on a ton of wide receivers in the draft a few years ago, and then suddenly the Birds were spending a top 10 draft pick on Devontae Smith, and then also traded for A.J. Brown. The Eagles went from one of the worst wide receiving cores with Carson Wentz to maybe the best wide receiver core in the entire league over the past two seasons. Or, for instance, how about cornerback? The Eagles' cornerbacks were atrocious last year and also very thin at the position in 2023. So what did Howie do this offseason? He brought in Isaiah Rodgers off suspension, re-signed Devontae Maddox, and used his two first draft picks on maybe the two best DBs in the draft. So apply that with the Saquon Barkley signing, and you start to kind of realize Howie has a plan, and that plan is to run the hell out of the football. I mean, we heard yesterday from Jeremy Fowler that Saquon Barkley is going to be the focal point of Kellen Moore's new offense, something Moore, of course, did in the past during his first year in Dallas back in 2019 with Zeke Elliott. That season, Elliott had 301 carries and 1,300 rushing yards. But the real difference between Saquon Barkley and, say, past Eagle backs like Swift or Miles Sanders is that Barkley's not going to be used the same way as the previous running backs. He's going to be the offense's entire focus. Now, I know what you're thinking. Thomas, wait, you have Jalen Hurts, you have A.J. Brown, you have Devontae Smith. They're not clearly going to make Saquon the focus and not give the football to the rest of the weapons, right? Well, the answer is yes, in a way. Like, Philly is still going to throw the football all over the place. They're going to run Jalen Hurts like crazy and get the ball into the hands of their best pass catchers. But all of that is going to be set up by Saquon Barkley. Let's use the San Francisco 49ers as a perfect example. I think Philadelphia is very clearly trying to model themselves after San Francisco this year. The year before the Niners traded for McCaffrey back in 2021, Jimmy Garoppolo threw a ton, almost 4,000 yards, but their slightly above average running back Elijah Mitchell had just 207 carries and under 1,000 yards. Once McCaffrey was traded for and kind of fully implemented because he was traded halfway through the 2022 season, so basically last year, 2023, he had over 60 more carries than Mitchell did during his final year, over 400 
250 more rushing yards and double-digit touchdowns. And it's not like McCaffrey becoming the offensive focal point in San Francisco has ruined their top receivers. Last year, Brandon Ayuk had over 1,300 yards, George Kittle clipped 1,000, and Debo Samuel was very, very close to 1,000 as well. So signing Saquon Barkley, paying him a bunch of money, and then making him the focal point of this offense is not going to take away targets from A.J. Brown or Devontae Smith or really even Dallas Goddard. Plus, Kellen Moore's offense is perfectly designed to get the most out of a guy like Barkley with his pre-snap motion, his runs from under center, something Philadelphia did not do last year, and of course, focusing on getting the best possible matchups for both his backs and receivers. Oh, and don't even get me started on what this all does for Jalen Hurts. For one, way less pressure. Like last season, the Eagles really hardly ran the football during, what, 12 games last year where they didn't use DeAndre Swift at all, meaning defenses learned just to kind of tee off on Hurts, play for the pass, and not be really scared of DeAndre Swift or Brian Johnson running the football. Add in Saquon Barkley and Kellen Moore, and you create a defensive dilemma that even the best teams are going to have a really hard time game planning for. But there is one big difference between San Francisco and Philadelphia, and that is the quarterback play. If the Eagles are trying to duplicate the Chris McCaffrey type effect with Saquon Barkley, that's very possible. We just talked about it. But there is, again, one big key the Eagles have in their favor, and that's Jalen Hurts. Brock Purdy is not a runner. He's a pocket passer. And sure, he's done well for himself the past few years. But when defenses prepare to stop the Niner rushing attack, they focus solely on Christian McCaffrey. If Saquon becomes the Eagle version of McCaffrey this year, defenses will have to keep Jalen Hurts' rushing abilities in mind as well on top of trying to stop Barkley. This creates all sorts of RPO and read option possibilities in Philadelphia the Niners simply haven't been able to do because Brock Purdy's not really an athletic running quarterback. And this ties in with the whole report that the Eagles are going to take the best parts of the Nick Sirianni offense and pair them with the best parts of Kellen Moore's offense that will include read option and RPO. So they're not going to get rid of them. They're going to use them a ton, but they're going to make sure defenses are not just trying to stop one person, whether it was Swift or obviously Jalen Hurts. They're going to have to figure out how to stop both or either or Jalen Hurts and Saquon Barkley. Now, all this sounds great, but the one hesitation you might still have is injuries. Like Thomas, Saquon has been injured in his past. And yes, that's pretty true. Saquon has had an injury history. But remember, so did Christian McCaffrey. And for comparison's sake, you got to realize McCaffrey missed 23 games between 2020 and 2021 in Carolina. I mean, it's one of the main reasons why the Panthers felt very comfortable trading what was still a very elite running back. But since joining San Francisco, McCaffrey's been relatively not perfect, but very healthy. Why can't Saquon Barkley follow suit? Talking about injuries is always tough because they happen, and they're going to happen to every single team, but most of the time they happen at random. Hating the Eagles' new plan to focus Saquon Barkley simply because he could get injured doesn't make a lot of sense. Any Eagle player could get injured at any time, and it could derail the season. We just need to knock on wood that that doesn't happen. Plus, if it helps, the Eagles have plenty of other weapons. We talked about those a little bit earlier. Saquon Barkley goes down. You have two running backs who at least, I think, could hold down the fort for a couple of games, and new running back Will Shipley and Kenny Gainwell. I know, not perfect but still, and then you have Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard. Like, there's a reason this is one of the best rosters in football. It's not just Saquon Barkley. That was Barkley's whole problem when he was in New York. In the end, this shift makes a ton of sense. And again, give credit to Howie Roseman for overcorrecting. He's done a fantastic job this offseason of trying to figure out exactly where he's gone wrong, not just in 2023, but in the past, and make sure that the secondary is not going to be a problem in 2024. Obviously, the defensive line is not going to be a problem. They already fixed the wide receiver situation. And now he wants to give the San Francisco 49er running back plan a try, but use his quarterback, Jalen Hurts, to make it even better and hopefully turn out maybe the best offense in football this season. What do you guys think? Are you pumped about Saquon Barkley? Do you think he's going to be the number one running back in the league this year? Let me know down below in the comments section. I think right now I saw a recent poll saying he was going to like be the fourth best running back in the league with McCaffrey being number one. But if the Eagles offense looks very similar to at least how they implemented Christian McCaffrey with Saquon Barkley, he stays healthy and Jalen Hurts improves from his 2023 campaign. This is going to be the best rushing team in the NFL. Saquon will be the number one running back in the NFL, and the Eagles offense is going to look a lot more dangerous and explosive than it did in 2024. We have plenty more stuff happening the next couple of days and weeks. I should have an Eagle player interview being recorded tomorrow, either dropping Wednesday or Thursday night. Stay tuned for that. It's another defensive player. I'm very curious what you guys think of this one. Again, trying to give you guys the best content possible as we march closer and closer towards actual content, which will be training camp reporting on July 23rd. Be sure to subscribe for that. Very close to 55,000 subs as well. Help me out there. I'm Thomas Mott. This has been the Thomas Mott Show.